So I'm, I don't know why, but I had the idea to paint shoes. I don't know why. First thing when I woke up this morning, I had something else planned and I woke up and I was thinking about my lesson today and I, w I remembered this book that I had years and years ago, probably 20, 25 years ago, before I was even contemplating picking up a paintbrush myself by over 12 years, probably. Um, I had this little book. <clears throat> it was sort of a gifty book, and it was by Sarah Mida, I think is her name. She's, um, I've ta I know I've talked about her before because she was really influential to me on on the aesthetic of watercolors and I'm, I've never forgotten it and she had this little book it was like a travel book about the south of France and I've looked for it and I can't find it I don't know what I did with it um but it's it's this little book it's this big and it's about her travels to the south of France and one one or two of the pages in the book were paintings of shoes, cotton espadrilles, um, with you know, and all these different bright colors and patterns, and I loved it so much because it reminded me of when I was a young girl, and espadrilles were like a really, you know, popular shoe, and I had many pair, and I loved espadrilles. I loved, loved, loved them. I don't know if they would be supportive enough for me these days, but. Um, might be worth a try because I really loved them. And anyways, I had this in my head and that's what we're going to paint today. So we're gonna paint, um, we're gonna paint tiny shoes. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my watercolor paper. I don't know what I did with it. Um, but for this project, you can use any paints that you want. Um, I'm gonna use my deep, deep white paints, I think. And yeah, I'm gonna use those. So I don't have the new colors in here yet, and I don't want to make this too complicated, so I'm just going to use my master set, um, which is all anyone would ever need. <laughs> um, and I'm going to wet my paints first because I have no idea what colors I'm going to use, and either should you. I would just grab your favorite paints and let um, let your paintbrush land where it, when it, where it feels like landing as you're painting these little shoes. So we're going to paint espadrilles, um, which are very simple and just simple shapes that anyone can paint. The color combinations are yours to choose. The patterns are yours to choose. Um, and if you enjoy this, you could think about other kinds of shoes that you could paint. My other favorite kind of shoes are Mary Janes. I love Mary Janes. In fact, I always have a red pair. Um, I do not even like the color red. It is nothing that I ever wear, ever, 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 ever on my body, but I love red shoes, and I don't know why that is, so I always have a pair of red Mary Janes. Um, so you could paint Mary Janes, you could paint sneakers, you could paint chucks, you could paint vans, you could paint... Um, you know, whatever kind of shoe you really love. You could paint fancy spiked high heels if that's what you love. Um, whatever you love. Boots. I don't know. Anything. Uggs. <laughs> Crocs, right? I wear Crocs all the time. Love them. Um, so let's just get a feel for painting these simple shapes and, and using fun colors while we're doing it. And then it's it's wide open, wide open possibilities for you. All right, let me get some watercolor paper and I'll be right back. So I have new watercolor paper. I've talked about it a few times, I think, by now. This is the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. I have fallen completely in love with it. I bought this, it's a seven by 10 block. Um, and I have not even opened it yet because I was still using up my other block. And so, I love it so much that I bought 10 sheets of it, full sheets, that I need to tear sometime um, soon. And it's just so much more economical to buy paper that way. To buy 10 sheets, it was, I think it was $40.40 or $44 or something like that at Dick Flick. You get a break when you buy 10. And that is a lot of paper, you guys. 
it's a ton of paper. Um, it's just a really good deal because you pay 25 bucks for these little things that are just, um, what are these, 10 sheets? 15 sheets, seven by 10. So you get a ton, a ton, a ton um, of paper when you buy it by the sheet. I highly recommend that. And it just so, it's also lovely because you can tear it into all different sizes from really small to, to bigger if you want. Um, so it's just, if, if you're going to fall in love with the paper and it comes in sheets, I highly recommend. You basically fold it in half and really score the edges and then, um, and then just fold it back and forth and just tear it into pieces. That's what I do. There are many different methods for doing it. I'm probably a little bit laborious with my way, but just the way I do it, I like the way it looks. You can go on YouTube and you'll find a million ways to tear watercolor paper. So I'm not sure why, but my camera just stopped and I'm gonna check and make sure that everything that I had done before was filmed. Yeah, hopefully that won't happen again because if I weren't if I were painting, I probably wouldn't have noticed it. It just randomly just quit filming. Okay. So I'm gonna draw um, an espadrille for you first. Let me grab a pencil. I don't think we have to draw them, um, but I think it's good to start with drawing them. Here's my sheet of paper. It's seven by 10 inches, and I am, um, I'm gonna just sort of line them up. I remember she had them just sort of lined up across the page. Maybe they were going in different directions. And so let's start maybe somewhere off center in the middle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint, we're gonna draw, excuse me, a rounded off triangle. Um, so, and not, not terribly big, but like a rounded off triangle, that's the toe box, okay? And <clears throat> the toe box <coughs> um, would kind of curve up like this, okay? And then you're gonna have a piece, like a, a rectangle, right, that comes, that comes down. And so, um, like this, and kind of squared off at the bottom. And, and they can take all different shapes within this shape, all right? It's super, super simple, really. And then um, there's an inside of the shoe that's sort of cloth, and so you kind of just draw lines. And then here, maybe this is the heel. Um, it comes maybe this way, and then this is the outside fabric of the shoe. And so the inside was this, like, corded canvas, right? So it's a pretty simple shape. It's sort of like a rounded off triangle and then a, a funny rectangle with a little shape on the inside. And you see how this piece becomes the outside of the heel and then the outside here. So there's a little twist there in a way, all right? I don't think it has to happen every time, but maybe. All right, so let's try to draw a matching pair, but they don't have to be exactly the same. I would just try to keep them um, similar sizes, right? So here's our, our, and then let's draw the inside. Oh. And then maybe this one, um, maybe this one is the inside. I'm having a hard time with my pencil. The inside maybe comes down this way and then here and then maybe um, here it becomes like the outside sort of like that and trust me it seems fussy but once you once you start painting it it won't matter at all okay now Use a kneaded eraser or something to remove some of this graphite. We don't want strong graphite lines. We just want enough um, to sort of follow along. Okay, so remove some of that graphite. And you can, I can still see it. Now I'm going to use a tiny brush. This is a tiny subject, right? This is a size 2. I really love this brush. I talked about it with my, my Adostera students yesterday. It's a very inexpensive brush. It's a Princeton mini detailer size two round 
and it's a 3050R. I really like this brush. It's comfortable to hold and it's inexpensive. It's synthetic and it, it works pretty well. So I'm gonna grab any color that I love. Okay, so grab any color that you love. Um, hmm. You know, I feel like something cheerful moment. I'm gonna try some Masha's Green from Deep Deep Light. I love this color. And what is the opposite of green? Red. So I wanna have a little bit of red here too. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red and put it on my palette so I can deepen the green. This is just, I think, English red. You could use any red, all right? So I'm gonna start with just the green and I'm gonna paint each part separately. Let's make the first pair fairly simple. And just paint the parts, okay? So there's the upper part. <clears throat> there's my little part that's inside. And then I'll paint the fabric but I'm going to leave the center, which is that sort of raffia cord type woven sole. I'll, I'll paint that separately later because that's what makes them espadrilles. They have that lovely color inside, that natural color. I don't know what you call that. Um, it's just kind of woven. Okay. Now... Do I want um, a little bit of shadow? Yeah, so I, I painted one shoe. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of red in the, into that color and make a darker um, version of that green. All right, and I'm gonna paint a little bit of shadow. So like here where these lap over each other, I'm gonna put a little bit of that darker green in there push some water into it and let it um, let it be a shadow. And then I'll take a little bit more and maybe there'd be a little bit of shadow at the base of the heel. Just a little bit and then just use clear water and, and just kind of blend it in like that. Maybe there's a tiny bit here at the corner. So take it easy, right? Just, just make it really, really fun. And then I'm going to go back to that plain green and paint the next shoe. So I have learned with projects like this that the looser and more free we are, the more charming it is, the less we're worried about making a mistake, the more charming it is. And these should be charming, not perfect, right? That's for sure. So if you, I would suggest starting with espadrilles and then you could always um, find another shoe, shoe shape and maybe Google, Google that and look at how they look from above like this and just simplify them. Mary and Jane's would be kind of the same, except we put a strap over it, right? All right, let's use some of that darker green. Um, where things overlap, we'll put a little bit. Um, like right in here because see they're they're joining and overlapping so i'm gonna put a little bit of the shadow color in there just let it blend in and i think that's good okay all right so you know in the other part that might be a little bit darker is is this little part right here where it kind of overlaps all right, so we're gonna let these dry. These are gonna be our plain pair. And when they dry, we'll go, when all of them dry, we'll go through and we'll put the centers in because those will all be one color, okay? So let's draw another pair. Um, let's draw a pair this way. 
So again, we'll start, I'm gonna get another pencil, hold on. This pencil is just ridiculous. Okay, well, let's draw another pair. Let's just make this pair the same, kind of squared off toe. And then, like that. Just keep it, keep it simple. Don't mind if they're a little bit different. So this one, the heel might be sticking straight up and there might not be a lot, a lot going on there, right? I'm just telling you, the less perfect, the more charming. Okay, all right, so let's paint these a different color. And I think, mm, I don't know what I'm thinking. What would look really pretty with that? Gosh, I think just a super bright red would be fun. Let's do a super bright red. I gotta tell you guys, I really, really love this paper. I'm very happy with this paper. Take your time. And we've already got green, so we can use that to darken our red a little bit. Be as free and easy with this as you can. So I'm gonna take some of the darker red that was made with mixing the green. All right, let's go back to the bright red. I hope you're taking very good care of yourself. I'm trying to take very good care of myself. We have to. We have a lot of work to do. The world needs your spirit and your art and your heart. Love, love, love these. Okay, put some of the dark red in. And I'm just gonna take a little bit more of the really bright. I just wanna Love it. Love that color when, when you need a lift. It's my granddaughter's favorite color, really bright red. It's one of my least favorite colors, but some days it's just what you need. Okay. All right. So let's do one more. I think we need one. Well, I don't know. Do we need one more? If there's three a crowd. Hmm. 
Hmm. Let's let's just do one more, I think. Um Let's make these a little bit smaller. And narrower. Isn't it fun how you can, you really can just draw these super simple and they work. They just work. <clears throat> and I think this one, oh, I think this one wants to be bright blue. And you can make a whole page. What a fun little card it would be. You could even make them both two colors, right? Like the top part is one color and the bottom part is another color. This would be also a really fun way to swatch new paints to make each pair of shoes a new color and I might not be able to wear espadrilles anymore but I can paint them See how unimportant it is to be really perfect with, with the structure of the shoe. It, it just works, right? Okay, so we'll, <clears throat> the opposite of blue is orange, so I'll just toss a little burnt sienna in there and add a little bit of shadow in a couple spots. Just a little. Love, love, love. I think we'll go back to our our green pair and we'll put, um, well, we, you know, you could do all sorts of things. You could use gel pens. I think we'll do that. I mean, that would be fun. But you could also just use um, opaque watercolors. So I'm going to use this color. It's called mint. And I can go on top of this and just, um, paint a little pattern. I'm just going to paint stripes across the top. That's it. Real simple. Pretty cute, huh? And on the red ones, um, well, let's try um, what would happen 
if we painted an opaque yellow like butterfly mixed with a little other meadow flower yellow um, some decorations on our shoes. They'll be barely visible when they dry, but that's kind of what we want. I love it. Okay. And the blue, hmm, maybe, I like just a tone that's a little off the tone. So I could take some opaque, like lavender. And maybe just give it, um, Stripe here at the edge where it's a little bit lighter. Like that. So many things you could do, right? Okay. So while our shoes are drying a little bit more, what we want to do is we want to mix up the collar of that um, inside thing. And honestly, if you have like a raw sienna, that would work really well. This is called bent grass, and um, this will also work well, maybe with a little bit of raw sienna mixed into it. That's about all you need. It's just sort of a, a natural color, right? And then you'll want to go a little bit darker for some of the... Um, some of the detail on it so let's see here um i wonder if we could probably paint it well we'll see i think it's i think the green one for instance is dry enough so we'll use this lighter um like bent grass with raw sienna first and i'm just going to paint um the background. In reality, I think this, the bottoms were a little bit narrower um, and the fabric kind of stuck out, but this makes it much easier and it's super cool. Okay. And they all get the same treatment, basically. I'm excited to see what you do. The colors you choose, the way you arrange them. Keep asking yourself the question, what if? What if I did this? What if I did that? And you'll find lots of fun possibilities. Honestly, I'm thinking that I want to put gold where these dots are. I like to put metallic on everything, but because it's not really showing up. See that? These are deep, deep light, so they're not, um, they're not really gouache. And so the watercolor kind of, let's see, just pierce in there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I think I have, do I have a white jacket here? Well, I know I have gold watercolors. I could use that. This is copper. I 
And this will, this will stand up for sure on these red shoes. And it will shimmer in the sun. You could also use gel pens or jelly roll markers. That would be super cool. Then you could get some really, really fun colors and do all sorts of patterns and just make your shoes out of watercolor and then do all of the decoration with jelly roll. I would love, I think that would be awesome. And then I'm thinking I have a silver do on the blue shoe. The green ones look great, so look at me, I smudged my paper, of course. Okay, and then when that dries, it'll be reflective and lovely. Look at that, you guys. Why do I always do things like that? Oh well, you know what? I, I can fix it when I'm done. I can take an eradicator brush and clean water and try to clean it up. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to do the inside and I'm just going to use straight up burnt sienna, a little bit darker than, than the base coat that I had. And so it basically just had little um, pattern like this. So it would just kind of go this way. sort of stripes down the center, varying sizes like that. That's it. Um, And you would do these on each of them. It's a little too dark. If you want to be really nitpicky about it and look up the inside of an espadrille and try to mimic it, you can. But honestly, this is all you need to do. Keep it charming. Remember? Um, And then if there's any place that feels like it needs a little more darkness or something like that, you can always add that in if you need a little more contrast somewhere. Because contrast makes things work, right? Contrast is really important. a little bit of contrast makes a big difference <clears throat> okay there we have it 
super simple. Super simple, fun, enjoyable, not stressful. Something just to do and relax and have some joy. You don't have to look at anything, you just paint. I just think they're precious. <laughs> I absolutely love them. All right, everybody, I hope this is helpful. Please take good care of yourselves and um, I will see you later in the week with more. All right, take care. Thank you so much. Bye.